Hey, how's everybody going? Joe Menza here. And this video is going to be a little different. Not a really a watercolor demo, although I'll be painting. Uh, this company, My Artscape at myartscape.org, was nice enough to send me some samples of their product and asked if I would try them out. So here is My Artscape's watercolor set. Very affordable set. I mean, these are like 80 cents a tube. Um, here's the 24 colors. Um, some of the colors that I typically use are not there. They have crimson. I use alizarin crimson. They don't have a raw sienna. Um, and their burnt sienna and burnt umber colors are very, very close. Here is the box that it comes in, and then there's a color swatch coupon for ordering more. And you can get these on Amazon as well and get free shipping. It's a pretty good price for paint, so <clears throat> when they told me about it, uh, I really wanted to see these paints. So first thing I did was I, uh, I put them in my... I made a palette strictly dedicated to their paints. These are all 24 colors. Now, I don't really use the greens. Here is my color swatch that I made showing all the colors. You can pause as needed. So I decided to go outside. It was a nice day. And I'm going to try doing some different uh, different pictures. As I said, there's a couple pictures or paint colors they don't have. They don't have Payne's Gray, which you can easily make just by taking black and adding some blue, maybe a little brown to it. So that's not really a deal breaker. Um, and the other colors you can get very close. Cad Yellow, they have four different yellows. There's four different blues. Um, you know, they pretty much have almost four of every shade. So I've kind of sped this up, otherwise you're going to be listening to me talk for a couple of hours. I'm using the, uh, I believe this is the Gamboge. There's a light red also. I tried to pick whatever, you know what I used here was uh, yellow ochre. They do have that, which is pretty much a staple, but no raw sienna. And I'm using uh, Fabriano. You know, I'm always on the lookout if there's inexpensive products that you can use as a beginner because that's a lot of the people come to my channel as a beginner. You know, it's very expensive. You can spend $100 on, you know, 10 tubes of paint. These here are 80 cents a piece. So are they worth it for the beginner at least to try and see if they like, uh, see if they like the medium, see if they like the, the hobby itself? <clears throat> so here I am, I'm just dabbing in, and I'm going rather heavy on these colors too, by the way. Um, I really want to see how they're going to react. And I've gone in with some, my own homemade Payne's Gray, they using their colors, and uh, ultramarine blue. We've got the yellow ochre going from behind. So I've just done a very, sort of a busy cloud scene. I'm giving it a little spray like I always like to do to keep it open. And the colors, they go on very, very nicely. And you know what? They're very strong and they're very vivid. Now I've used QOR brand paints and those are, are very intense. Uh, pigment and my concern here was I've used some paints like I've used the uh, master's touch and the problem with those is, is they kind of dry a little on the chalky side um, if you get those on sale those are about three dollars a tube you get a pretty nice size tube here uh, from those um, so my concern here was is that these are going to dry chalky they're going to have you know some kind of some kind of odd reaction to them so here, look at if you see, I've put on this blue. It's a pretty intense blue. I'm trying to make a, you know, a nice intense scene here. And maybe what I'll do is I'll take a couple of the paintings that are in this, and I'll do a longer version. And you can see, uh, <clears throat> I'll go through, you know, what I did to paint, um, like any other video. So I'm, I've added a little white in here, too. I was very curious about, they have a titanium white. And I, again, I was surprised about the strength of the titanium white. Um, it doesn't dry back. I mean, I've used like Windsor and Newton um, titanium white, and it tends to dry back to where it almost disappears, and you have to layer it on. Um, this paint here is, it's pretty strong, as you can see. I'm, kind of doing some clouds with that you know of course it's a no-no a lot of people are not going to do what I do but I strive to be a little different 
Um, <clears throat> so I've put that in, in just to kind of vary up the clouds a little bit. We've got some light coming down from the middle. And I'm just kind of dabbing some of that out now, get reclaiming some of that white from the paper. Easy to dab out. Um, no problems with that. Um, if you use like the Thalo or the, you know, a couple of the other colors, they do stain the paper pretty good, um, which is, again, surprising. So for the cost of the tube, um, 80 cents a tube, you get a set of 24. Uh, I believe on their website, they're about 20 bucks for the set of 24. They're nicely packaged. The tubes are each individually sealed with a foil. You have to turn the cap over and pop the seal so you know they're fresh and uh, they like I said they're pretty intense colors and I enjoyed using them my only concern was and I shared this with them was that at this time they don't have individual colors available they do have a smaller set of watercolors but uh, at this time, they don't have individual tubes. Me, personally, I tend to go through blue and yellow faster than any of the other colors. So my concern is, is that I would go through blue and yellow, and I'd have to order another $20 set to get replenish those two colors. So hopefully along the line, maybe they'll come up with maybe a landscape set that has those in there. I don't know. Now, I'm using the browns here. I'm using the burnt sienna burnt umber. Like I said, those are both pretty similar and using a little bit of the Payne's gray. And now I'm doing a little bit of scraping with the card. And as you can see, it scrapes no problem. And I'm just kind of dabbing in a little extra burnt uh, sienna. I want these a little a nice, nice brown effect on the, on this little mountain here that I'm doing. And just uh, doing a little bit more with the bottom just to kind of shape that properly and you can see the blue has dried nicely it stayed intense up there on top so you have cobalt um, you have cerulean you have ultramarine so you have a wide variety of colors if you're a flower painter too I think you'll probably like this set because there is a lot of good colors in there you can go back and look at my swatch that I created. It's not the prettiest swatch, but um, I wanted to get an idea of what the colors were and what I would need to kind of figure out. That was one of my challenges here was <clears throat> I'm very used to using certain colors and how they'll mix. So here I kind of had to guess a little bit. Um, here I'm making my own green using ultramarine blue. I haven't ventured out in this painting and tried any of their greens. I'm just not a store-bought uh, green user, nor would I use greens that they have in the set straight out of the tube without mixing them into maybe some yellows or some darks because they're just, uh, they're not the type of greens that I would use for my landscapes. But as you can see, as I've used some of the yellow here, um, there's a light yellow uh, that uh, it, it look at the how it kind of just glows I mean it's almost fluorescent and again I don't see like this rich of colors in a set especially one that has paints that are 80 cents a tube now this company too they are known for their acrylics apparently and they have a lot of variety in their acrylics and they do sell oil as well um, they sent me a set of acrylic paint too uh, that I'll be trying in a future video so they reached out to me and they asked me if I'd try these out. I'm not affiliated with it, not making any money other than I got free product to try. Um, and I told them I'd give them my honest opinion. Um, for the way I paint, I think these paints do just fine. I wouldn't have a problem with using them or even purchasing them. Again, my only drawback is, is I cannot replenish individual colors. And I would hope that they address that in maybe a future set. Maybe they come up with a three-pack of just ultramarine or, you know, ultramarine blue. I mean, pretty much everybody I know uses that. So that would be that would be my thing. Otherwise, I'd end up putting a different brand of blue in my set until I ran out. And then I would order another set. But you can't beat the price. I mean, you really can't. Like I said, I've used Master's Touch. And 
they're good. I mean, they this one here, when I squirted out the tubes, there was like no blobs of water that came out. No funky, like, have you ever taken a old tube or like a tube of very inexpensive paint and squirted it out? And it almost looks like oil comes out of it or some kind of, you know, maybe it's the gum, whatever, binder. These colors didn't have any of that. And I'm told a couple of artists were the ones behind making these paints. Um, that was just kind of the backstory. So um, maybe they did. Maybe they went and they decided, hey, we're going to make our own paints and, you know, put our own brand on them. You can read the uh, <clears throat> inside of the box. Uh, it says that they're artist grade. They have good light fast characteristics. Although I didn't test it, I was going to leave a painting out in the sun and see what happens. But uh, they say they have good light fast characteristics. They're artist grade. Um, they give you a 100% uh, guarantee that if you're not happy with them, and it seems to me they're very interested in, you know, people getting a hold of their paints, trying them, and enjoying them. So this one here is just about done. I mean, you can see this is my usual. This is what I do a lot of the time is, you know, mountains, trees, and, uh, you know, water. And it's turned out fairly well. Um, they are, like I say, the colors are intense. They're very bright. They're very, uh, very strong. Very strong pigments from what I can tell. Okay, so here is the finished painting. You can get a good look at that. Let's put a mat on it. And uh, there it is in the mat. I think it's very colorful. It turned out very nice. Um, and now we'll go to the next one. I'm going to go indoors for this one. You can see the little pamphlet next to me so people can refer to that. Again, myartscape.org. I'm not sure whether they have a .org, but uh, they do sell on Amazon as well. So not only do you get their guarantee, but you have the Amazon protection. And if you're a Prime member, you'll get free shipping. And uh, when they sent me mine, I think I got them in like a day. I think I got it in maybe a day, maybe the next day. There was very little waiting. They sent me some brushes as well. Um, I'll have those in the acrylic video because they're not really ones I would necessarily use for watercolor, although you can, um, in a nice little zip bag. Nice hot pink zip bag, but it's a very nice set. And then I've got the uh, acrylic paints. So I'm anxious to give those a try. Those I'll be trying out in the next week or so. But I wanted to start with the watercolor because that's my main uh, main area. So here we are. We're, again, going with some blues and some uh, yellow ochre in the back. And you can see again here, I've put on a little different of a blue here. Um, got some cerulean and some cobalt going in here um, just to try some different blues. And again, you can see it creates a nice sky. If you're wanting to try, you haven't tried painting yet, um, you know, you order a hake brush, a hake brush as we use here, the Ron Ranson, that, that's the brush that I recommend. Um, you can use another similar type of brush, but uh, that's the one I recommend. I feel you'll have the best results. By the way, here I'm going in with some very dark blue on top. I really want to make this very dramatic on top. So uh, you want that, and I'm thinking you're going to spend at least 10 or $15 on just that brush. But if you're starting out and you want to buy like something just to see if you'll like it, I mean, you could buy a brush three, four dollars that look like what we're using here. They're not going to be as good. Um, and you buy this set of paints, twenty dollars, maybe four or five dollars for a brush, and uh, a pad of paper like I'm using here, Fabriano, or you could use uh, you could use Strathmore from the hobby store. I mean, if you get it on sale, you could probably get a a pad of paper for ten dollars, so thirty, all in, I think, and you find a board laying around your house, forty dollars to try to see if you'll like this hobby to 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 jump in, um, to see if you'll like this medium. And these paints will not uh, lead you down the wrong rabbit hole. Uh, 
They say paper is first and then paints are second. Um, the type of way that I paint, I can get away with. I don't do transparent necessarily watercolor. If you do a more transparent, very light, transparent -y colors, you're going to want to use cotton paper. Um, maybe these paints will not necessarily be your choice for, uh, you know, top of the line. But maybe they will be. I don't know. But I don't paint that way. For what I do, I would use these paints. I would use them all the time. So... Um, if you look at look at the intensity of, of these colors that are here, um, and even when they dried and I re-wet them, um, they still had a nice intensity to them. So, I, like I say, I'd, I'd use these. Um, I, I'd like to do a color fast test and leave one laying outside, um, but I really think they'll it'll be fine. Um, they don't have like the CAD colors. I don't think. Um, maybe they could answer this. I don't think these are are toxic at all. Like CAD colors can be toxic. Um, I don't think those have the issue because they don't have CAD colors here, those type of colors. Um, it seems like they've skipped over certain colors, raw sienna. Um, and like I say, there's not an alizarin crimson, but there is a crimson. And their burnt umber could be a little browner for me. Um, I talked to them about that. There might have been an issue between the burnt sienna and burnt umber. Um, but no no worries because you can always add a little blue. You can make things a little bit darker. Um, I sent them a list of paints that I'd like if they made a landscape set. Um, and, of course, they would include the, uh, you know, the Ron Ranson palette of colors. Uh, you know, we're very, very similar. I'm starting to like having a burnt sienna in my set. Um I like these. I like having, you know, I used to stick to six, seven colors because of the simplicity of it. But now, I mean, I had this palette of colors and it's like I have 24 colors in front of me. So I'm kind of like jumping around. Let's try this. Let's try that. I don't recommend that for the beginner. I think you should stick to a smaller palette. But sometimes you jump to a bigger palette and you start finding, oh, I do like this color. You kind of get into a rut with certain colors. So even here now, I'm trying to do a boat. Um, this is kind of a little inspired by uh, Edward Sego. I got his book uh, from, uh, came from England. I ordered it on Amazon. And I have Ron Ranson's Edward Sego tribute book, hardcover. Very, very nice, very nice book. Nice coffee table book to have to just refer to different paintings. There's watercolor, there's drawings, there's oil paintings in there. So very, very, uh, very nice book to have as long as we're doing recommendations. So again, if you go to this set and you're used to certain colors, you're going to have to play around with color balance a little bit to see how certain things mix. But, you know, you can achieve with the colors that they have here, you can achieve really any set of colors um, that you can do with any other set. Now, they do give you a black, and the black... Um, I don't really, I've never used black, but you can add a little blue or a little brown to it. But I'll tell you what, when you do use it, it doesn't have, one of the problems I find with Payne's Gray is that it tends to look shiny if you, it looks just so dark. And when I mixed their black with blue, I didn't really have that issue. So here I decided to do a little ship, like I said, um, trying different things, trying, you know, using the rigger brush and a few other little things and i think i'll put a little white in the sky it might be a little little too intense up there um so here it is i've put a little white up in there and you can see that titanium white it holds its own again i'm i'm surprised i'm i'm pleasantly surprised um so you can see here um got a nice little little cloud effect it's a very, very, uh, very good white. I mean, I would use that on a regular basis. Um, it doesn't fade away like like some of the other whites I've used. I don't know what pigments they're using here, but uh, they're very good. So back to uh, uh, back to the in the next painting here. On to the next painting. This one here, I'm going to venture into their reds and see how the reds hold up. 
Um, we're going to use some. They have a. They have a. Uh, they have about three or four different shades of red, and then they also have a violet and a mauve. So I'm going to work those in too, being those have red into them. We'll do a little bit more of a fantasy element here, not usually what I do, but honestly, after I did this painting, it kind of got me thinking into, you know, I kind of, we all do, we all tend to do kind of the same paintings. We never really venture out into like something really different or really different colors. Sometimes we tend to stay within the same palette. And some people out there, art buyers, you know, they... Um, they like a lot of color, so it can be fun. It could be fun to try some different colors. Like I have this red, I have the crimson, and there's an orange red. Um, and so I'm working that into the background. So we're going to have this interesting, uh, interesting sort of sunset. You know, as it gets dark, you get a darker purple sky, and then you get uh, the red dancing off sort of the bottom of the clouds. Sometimes when you see that in person, it looks kind of unreal. Now I'm coming in, you don't see this brush I pull out every once in a while, but I have a whole rack of Chinese uh, sort of calligraphy or whatever you want to call them type brushes. And just to, this one happened to be soft and dry, so I grabbed it and did a little blending. So working on the foreground here, we'll have maybe a little water. Again, I make these up as I go along. Um, you know, compositions, once you get to a certain point, you can make things up, I mean, once you do enough paintings. But the only danger is, is that you end up repeating yourself quite a bit. You kind of know what you've done in your mind. And it feels like your imagination, but at the same time, sometimes it's a collection of little things you've already done. I'm just touching up a little of the red with the fan brush. I don't want to lose too much of that. That's like an orangey red. Interesting color. That would be like a cad red or cad yellow. I mean, if you look at like <clears throat> pyrrol red, there's a similar one to pyrrol red in there. So again, just blending in a little bit, blending in a little of the red. So here now I'm getting some reflective colors down below, giving it a spray, keeping it open. As you can see, these reds, I mean, they've put a little yellow in the middle too. It's staying. I mean, I don't know if you ever used like some red sometimes and you're trying to put a little red in the, in the uh, sort of background, you know. Um, they vanish almost. I mean, like they dry back 50%. And this one here has just stayed pretty vivid. I'm taking a little shades of that purple. I'm just kind of touching up a little shadowing in the sky, adding a little more titanium white where I think it needs it. A little bit of yellow. Get that yellow cloud effect, uh, like the brightness is bouncing off the bottom. Give it a little spray. So yeah, definitely something different here, but I wanted to give the I wanted to give a, you know, the colors an equal chance. So now I'm into a more finished version of the painting. You can see the little sunset, you can see the yellow in the center kind of falling on the on the distant trees. And again, I'll do a, I'll take this one and I'll do a longer I'll do a I'll do a regular video and we could go over the colors. Of course, they'll be my artscape colors. Uh, the other thing I noticed, there was no odor from these paints. I did notice a review that said the paints had an odor, but uh, there was no odor whatsoever. Um, so that was not an issue. Um, really, no issues that I can think of. The, my biggest issue was I'm probably going to run out of blue followed by a particular yellow. And I'll have to order another set in order to get them. Now, that may not 
affect you. You may not have that problem. You may paint other things. You may paint flowers and things like that. Plus, there are four blues in the set, so um, you may not necessarily use ultramarine blue to the extent that I do. But hopefully, they will sell maybe a six-pack, or maybe they'll break down and they'll sell, uh, you know, just like the blue, uh, something like that, or a landscape set. So here's the finished version of this, and it's matte. And very different for me, but it's one that I thought, you know, I should do more stuff like this. So for that, it was a good experiment as well. I'll have links down below. Um, your mileage may vary. Remember, they didn't pay me uh, anything. They just sent me some paints. Always willing to try new things. Um, and then finally, there's one other painting. My video died. My phone died. It was so hot outside that uh, I had a temperature warning, and I did not get the video for this one. But this was one I did using the mauve and violet, um, doing sort of a purple look. So that's it. Um, and let me know what you think if you uh, pick up any of these paints. I'd be curious to find out. And uh, at the end of the week, we'll have a, our regular video. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great week.